Hey, good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday morning to you, and welcome back to Morning Musings. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. I do appreciate you being with me. I hope these studies are a tremendous benefit to you. Uh, you know, look at it like this. If Matthew chapter 24 is fulfilled, we are living in an incredible time. We are living in the new covenant world of Jesus Christ, where in his life and righteousness, we're living in the presence of God. Because after all, that's what the parousia of Christ is all about, his presence. And people like to say, oh, look, look at all the sin, look at all the corruption. But you see, what that objection, and it's an understandable objection, but it's based upon false assumptions, uh, the point of fact is it, it ignores that the story of eschatology is really honestly all about sanctuary. That is to say, the purpose of God was to create in Christ a place of sanctuary. A place of sanctuary from the world. A sanctuary from the hopelessness and the despair and the futility outside of Christ. That's what the concept of tabernacle and temple represents. It represents sanctuary. That in Him are found all spiritual blessings, Ephesians 1 verse 3. And so when, when people look at all the sin and the hate and the injustice, the corruption that is in the world, and they say, oh, well, see, that proves that Christ has not come. No, it doesn't. It has nothing whatsoever to do with it. So that objection simply fails to understand the entire concept of temple and sanctuary. But I dig digress, okay? <laughs> All right. We're looking at Jesus' prediction that the, in, the, in the time leading up to his parousia, many false prophets, many false apostles, false messiahs would arise and, and deceive even the elect in some instances. And they would cause a great apostasy. As a matter of fact, an apostasy of, quote, the majority, according to the New American Standard translation and other translations, by the way. So, what we have here is an amazing prediction. And yet, by the way, we had Tim LaHaye who wrote a book in 1972 who made the comment that what was happening back then in 1972 is proof positive that we're living in the last days. 1972, a generation ago. And yet, the Lord hasn't come according to Mr. LaHaye's predictions. The reality is, the undeniable reality is, that false prophets, false teachers, false apostles, and false messiahs arose in the first century. I shared with you yesterday how, guess what? We have the story of Simon the sorcerer. We have the story of Elamus. Oh, guess what? Then, in Acts chapter 19, we have the sons of Sceva. Who are the sons of Sceva? Now, mind you, these are evidently Jewish exorcists. They were seven men who claimed to be able to cast out demons. Now, i got to tell you, God's got a fantastic sense of humor. The sons of Sceva, uh, now remember, they, they, they were men of reputation. They were men of influence. They were men of power in the city of Ephesus. They saw Paul casting out demons by the power of God. So, here they are. They're evidently kind of strutting their stuff. I mean, after all, they are exorcists. And so they find a man possessed of demons, and they call on the demon to come out in the name of Jesus. 
And the demons respond, well, let's see here. Well, we know Jesus, and uh, we know Paul, but uh, we don't know you. <laughs> I mean, that's hilarious. And the demon threw that man onto the sons of Sceva and just beat the ever-loving soup out of them. Were these false teachers? Uh, yes. Were they workers of false miracles? Yes. Had they deceived many, many people? Yes. So on every point in Acts chapter 19, we have the arrival and the presence of false prophets, false teachers, working false miracles to, per, to deceive the people. But the great power of God defeated them, humiliated them, exposed them as false teachers. You see, the point being that here, here on the pages of Acts chapter 19, is the outworking, the open display, the open manifestation of the fulfillment of Jesus' prediction in Matthew chapter 24. It, 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 it is literally amazing to me how modern day teachers can see these examples of Simon the Saucer, of Elamus, and the sons of Sceva, and just simply wave their hand at these instances, these instances and examples that perfectly fit Jesus' words, and yet dismiss them solely upon the basis, well, uh, that doesn't prove anything because we've still got false prophets today. And the false prophets are going to get worse and worse and worse before the time of Jesus. Folks, why are we not willing to accept the biblical testimony of the fulfillment of Jesus' words and impose onto the text our own presuppositional, traditional, maybe even historical views, but because of our preconceived ideas about the nature of the coming of the Lord, we completely gloss over we reject, we deny this inspired testimony of the fulfillment of Jesus' words. I want to say to you, as kindly as possible, that the challenge for you and for me is to lay aside our pre preconceived ideas. We can see what Jesus predicted. We can see what happened, even in Acts, and we haven't even gotten to the epistles yet. But we will do that tomorrow. And in the meantime, hey, look, folks. And by the way, thank you so much for the good response to this offer. Do not forget my very special offer for November and December of 2019. Three books, like Father, Like Son, on Clouds of Glory, The Resurrection of Daniel, Chapter 12, Verse 2, Fulfilled or Future, and Blast from the Past, The Truth About Armageddon. If you bought these books separately, they would cost you $61. But, for continental U.S. orders only, for November and December 2019, your total delivered price, total delivered price, $40. Going to save you over $21, folks. That's incredible. Like I've said, I've never made this offer before. That is a fantastic savings. Now, if you live outside of the continental U.S., you, if you live overseas or whatever, and you want to purchase these books at a greatly, even more of a greatly reduced price to have a PDF electronic version, then contact me and I'll help you out, okay? Okay, thanks for joining me for this morning's Morning Musings. In the morning, we're going to look at, number one, the reality of false prophets, and number two, the reality of the great apostasy in the first century. You do not want to miss it. See you on the flip side.